There are, are a couple of moving parts inside the B9 printer. It's a pretty simple design, but there are some, um, some things you should note. Number one, this gold arm, which uh, the build table attaches to, can move up and down along this linear slide when this lead screw is turned by the stepper motor. So actuating the uh, up-down toggle switch on the right will allow you to manually position that gold arm, which is helpful when you're removing the, the, the print, for example. Uh, you would never need to use these toggle switches during the actual print process. That's all automatic. You also notice that there's a red plate that uh, the VAT attaches to. It slides left and right uh, in a channel, and you can do that manually with the left-right toggle switch. It's actuated by a, a arm that rotates, and if I'm careful here, I can go ahead and move that manually, um, and you can see that that moves the, the red plate left and right. So next we'll talk about the removable parts that uh, actually attach to these items. Now here we are looking on the inside of the B9 Creator, and I'm going to go ahead and install some of the removable components so you can see how they fit in the machine. To begin with, I have the VAT. Notice that the window side is on the right, the spout side is on the left. This is the build table that it's going to, or I'm sorry, this is the slide table that it's going to engage with. So we'll just maneuver that in uh, over top of the supports for the sweeper and then kind of slide it around until it, all four feet engage the slots. And then I'll go ahead and take these small thumb screws, one on each side, and uh, don't over tighten these, just put them in until they're just gently snug. And that'll hold the build table in place. If you over tighten them, then you're, you might put some stresses on the vat that you really don't want to have. Um, here we have the sweeper assembly. Note that, there, that the uh, rubber wiper is on the bottom, and then the flap just hangs in these two slots above it. Um, there's a tab on each side, which allows it to engage the slot on each side of the vat, like that. Then we just attach the springs. And if you note, there's a little small loop and then a handle that kind of helps. That loop goes into the hook and that applies some downward pressure of the sweeper on the surface of that PDMS, which is coating the bottom of that vat. <clears throat> Now, we've put this in here and there's no resin in, uh, so I just want to point out that you wouldn't want to actuate the sweeper uh, any time there's no resin because it acts as a lubricant. You, you really don't want the sweeper rubbing across the bottom of the vat dry. Uh, finally, we have the build table. I'll talk a little bit about the build table. There are four hex screws here that when loosened, as they are right now, allow this um, table to have some adjustment. When we calibrate, we'll be tightening those up so that we have uh, the bottom of this plate sitting flat on the bottom of the PDMS. But as far as installation, there are four slots on the bottom of the gold arm. There are four tabs. Those four slots should engage the tabs, and then the uh, thumb screw secures it in place. And again, there's no reason to over tighten that. Uh, if you've finished a print, this thing will be covered in resin. It's a great idea to go ahead and and uh, loosen the thumb screw and then stick it in the farthest hole in the back and then simply uh, set those four or those two screws engage the holes on the top of that arm and allows the the resin to drain free um, and it's a great way to to uh, clean the build table before you remove the print so that that's all the components that go inside uh, that are removable and um, next we'll start talking about how to print Underneath you see the heart of the, of the engine, which is the, the light projector. It um, is an HD model and projects upward into the vat uh, the HD slice, sliced images, which is, uh, then cures the resin and forms the model one layer at a time. Uh, there's a lens cover, which you, of course, want to remove when you're printing. There is a black focus ring turning it if you're viewing it from the top, if you turn it clockwise, that's adjusting it towards the 70 uh, micron resolution. If you turn it counterclockwise, that adjusts it to 30. Uh, on the bottom here, there's a white wheel pushing it to the left, uh, sets the resolution to 30 XY. So all the way to the left is 30 XY. 
all the way to the right is both 50XY and 70XY resolution. There, if you, it's important to note that if you're doing 50XY resolution, this wheel is not floating around there in the middle somewhere. It's all the way to the right, just like it is for 70 micron resolution. Um, it's a little harder to see, but there is a small thumb screw on the projector hanger, and when you turn that thumb screw, you can make fine adjustments up and down with the projector, which is important when you're calibrating it. There's also a small T-pin, which when you pull it out, allows the projector to do gross movements uh, and you can pin it into three holes. The one at the top is for 30 microns XY, the one in the middle is for 50 microns XY, and then the lowest one is for 70 microns XY. And just a brief note if you're not familiar with the XY resolutions that I'm talking about, um, 30 microns XY simply means that each pixel is 30 microns square. Uh, and similarly for 50 and, and 70. So 30 microns is the highest resolution. At 30 microns, your, your image size is fairly small, but the pixels are also small, and that's what gives you the great resolution. As you lower the projector, the image is going to get bigger, but your resolution will also suffer a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> on the side, there are two connectors. One is a USB connector for connecting your printer to your uh, host computer, and the other is a power connector which provides DC power basically just for the motors. On the bottom of the projector, there is a standard um, AC power cord which powers the projector, and then there is uh, a couple of other connectors. The one I've got hooked up right here is an HDMI input. Over on this side, there are two connectors for VGA inputs. Uh, you can use either one. They're labeled one and two. When you're connecting your uh, printer to your host computer, we will select either HDMI or VGA. It won't matter, it won't have any uh, consequence on the quality of your prints. Really, you just wanna look at what your host computer has available. You need a, uh, either an HDMI or a VGA output in the host computer, just simply needs to be able to support 1920 by 1080 resolution. That's pretty much it for the hardware. Uh, I guess I could also point out that the, there are four thumb screws on each side of the projector which you will loosen and that allows you to move that projector up and down. Once it's calibrated, you tighten them back up again.